International Student Symposium on Basic Sciences 2022, uh, which is being organized by Akal University Talwandi Sabo. I am very happy and grateful to all the distinguished experts uh, who have uh, delivered their uh, lecture in the field of mathematics, uh, physics, chemistry, and geology in the past two days. In this continuity, today we are having an expert lecture uh, besides oral and uh, poster presentations by the participants in the field of uh, life sciences. I hope you all will have an another productive day of interesting and stimulating discussion. So by taking not much of time, uh, I take this opportunity to welcome our uh, today's eminent speaker, Professor Kashmir Singh, who is head of the Department of Biotechnology at Punjab University, Chandigarh. Professor Singh is a well-recognized figure in the field of plant biotechnology. He has obtained his uh, doctorate degree from Institute of Himalayan Biotechnology, Palampur in 2007. He has guided 25 PhD students as supervisor and co-supervisor till now. Around 200 research papers are with his name in the journals of uh, high repute and impact factor with 3000 citations. Dr. Singh has also three international patents for uh, developing the novel cloning methods. Dr. Singh has uh, delivered many invited lectures at uh, various national and international conferences. He is also on the editorial board of journals of international reputes such as scientific reports, BMC, plant biology, frontier in genetics, etc. He has been awarded research grants of about five crores from various funding agencies like DBT, SERB, CSIR, ICAR, UGC, and DST. He is also the recipient of various prestigious uh, fellowships and awards like INSA Bilateral Exchange Fellowship. He has been the visiting scientist at McGill University, Canada, Marie Curie PDF in Poland, Postdoctorate Research Associate in USA. So it is our pleasure to have you with us today, sir. So by taking uh, not more time, I would like to invite our today's uh, speaker to deliver his talk and share the valuable knowledge with our students. So Dr. Singh is going to present the expert lecture on the topic metabolic engineering on biochemical pathways in medicinally important plants again i welcome you sir and uh, up, uh, up to you thank you very much uh, dr Rinder. i am audible clearly yes sir you are audible okay thank you so first of all i would like to thank uh, vice chancellor uh, dr Bindu Singh for organizing such an uh, interactive workshop that is very helpful for the students and also to the organizers. Dr. Binder, Dr. Binder, thank you for this talk. Today I am going to deliver it to the of Although we are working on many crops like fruits, potatoes, and vegetables, but. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, your voice is uh, breaking, sir. There is some okay. noise in yes, the, the background. Okay. Uh, now it is fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it is fine. The van was uh, in very fast. <laughs> Actually, I am leaving lecture from my car because lecture, uh, in, I am right now not in Chandigarh, I am in my native town, so I don't have very good uh, connection at my home, so I am sitting in my car to deliver the lecture. I hope uh, uh, you will be able to get the things I want to tell you. Yes, so sir. Now, it, yes, we have, it is, your slides are visible, sir. Thank you very much. So, uh, 
today i'm going to deliver talk on metabolic engineering of biochemical pathways in medicinally important plants so i did my phd on uh, biochemical pathways and later on uh, yes still we are continuing on exploring the metabolic pathways in different plants so i will tell you about our experience in uh, two plants uh, where we have get uh, very huge amount of data and why i will share with you so before going to that uh, i will tell you some facts about the methylene plant like uh, everyone in india know that uh, we are using uh, the plant or herb from thousands of years and it is in our uh, routine household items that uh, we know the effects of uh, turmeric ginger garlic fennel on our day to day routine and uh, majority of us they try to treat us at home before going to any doctor so as per who estimate not only indians like chinese and other uh, countries they also rely widely on herbal medicine so 80% of the people population in the world they rely on uh, medicine plants according to who so uh the twenty one thousand plant species say they have a potential to use as medicinal plants. So I turned off my video because uh, uh, I think in turning off the video will have better connectivity in showing the slides and uh, it will can turn it off. So in developed countries such as United States, uh, people uh, they use uh, like. 25% of the population they rely on herbal drugs while in the developing countries such as such as india and china the contribution is as much as 80% and uh, treatment of with medicinal plant is considered very safe as there is no other side effects or minimal side effects now uh, apart from that these plants they play critical role in development of cultures like we have cultural specific plants like we have here uh, turmeric amla mango tree people tree that are used in a very uh, traditional uh, like functions ceremonies at in our home and the common plants such as ginger green tea walnut aloe pepper and many more they have therapeutic value they are also used in natural dyes pest control like we all know that uh, neem has been used as anti pest pest agent from so many uh, centuries and it can be used as fume perfume tea and so on they are used to keep away ants flies mice and seeds they are used in many treatments such as diarrhea constipation hypertension low sperm count nice century and many of the disorders and uh, over uh, the past two decades there have been a tremendous increase uh, tremendous increase in the use of herbal medicine like uh, you have noticed that, uh, in last two years also uh, there was a huge demand of herbal medicines because uh, people they want to increase their immunity so they were taking immunity booster plants like uh, Giloe, aloe, turmeric, and mixture of all these drugs. And our Ministry of Ayush, they have developed many uh, herbal formulations that can increase your immunity. But uh, many people they take it without advice of any doctor or Ayurvedic consultant, so they face side effects also. So excessive use of everything is bad. So it should be used within the limits. Now, if we talk about secondary metabolites, uh, these are the compounds that are unique to particular species or genus. And uh, although these plants, uh, these compounds are present in all the plants, but uh, their concentration varies from plant to plant. Like uh, we have uh, turmeric, where curcumin uh, is very high. Then uh, uh, Dr. Lee's work on amla, he knows that it has high amount of vitamin C and flavonoids and uh, I will tell you about our plants where we have high concentration of terpenoids and uh, 
So these uh, compounds they are produced by plants uh, for defense and for developing a harmonious ecosystem with the environment. Like they need these not for the use of themselves but by the use of others also. Uh, few days back uh, there was a report that when honey bees or bees they come to plants they make their nectar sweeter the plants make their nectar sweeter so this is uh, their harmony with the ecosystem so they have very high uh, concentration in the plants uh, so the inference is that they must do something okay and the, the what they do is we are exploring these for our uses maybe in the household items or in the medicine or in the pharmaceutical industry and uh, at present natural products they are the basis of for a big percentage of drugs currently available in the market for example we have seen quinine and uh, artemisinin these are the two only known sources of antimalarial drug and both are uh, available from plants and uh, a few years back the person who uh identified Art artemisinin he was uh, awarded nobel prize so this is a general pathway where many metabolites they have been produced so this is a common uh, pathway where uh, shikimic acid fatty acid and uh, acetyl coenzyme a they work together and produce different kind of uh, uh, compounds like alkaloids uh, terpenoids flavonoids lignins Tannins and many more. We have over uh, uh, one lakh compounds uh, identified till now. There are more than one lakh that are produced by different plants. So we have, uh, for example, terpenoids. They are uh, also called isoprenoids because they have this uh, uh, five carbon isoprene unit, and uh, these are the largest class. Of uh, uh, compounds available from plants, and over 40,000 different structures of terpenoids they have been uh, elucidated till now. So many more they are yet to be characterized. So they contribute to aroma of fruits such as mango, scent of eucalyptus, flavors of cinnamon, cloves, and ginger, yellow coloring sunflower, and red curry tomato. So we know that. Uh, uh, Lycopene in tomato is uh, having anti cancer properties. Similarly, cinnamon cloves and ginger, they have many uh, hepatoprotective and uh, gastrointestinal uh, properties, and they are used to make many good quality perfumes like uh, uh, the natural perfumes produced by big companies like Gucci, uh, Chanel. They use natural products, that's why they are very, very costly. So they are uh, available in all parts of the plants like uh, cinnamon is available in bark, peppermint and the hair leaves of uh, this menthol, then uh, lemon in the rain, rose in the petals and ginger in the rhizome. So this Tao Yu Yu, he got Nobel Prize in uh, uh, Medi Physiology and Medicine uh, for his discovery of artemisinin from the Artemisia amina that was used for the treatment of malaria. Then we have phenolic compounds, uh, over 15,000 they have been known. They have large chemical diversity and uh, they have properties of defense against herbivores and pathogens, for example, tannins and isoflavonoids, mechanical sports like lignin, uh, anthocyanins, they attract pollination and give color to flowers and also absorb harmful. UV radiation such as common flavonoids. Now flavonoids, they are most widely studied group. Over 8,000 they have been described. Very important uh, function in plants like they are UV protectants, uh, insect pollinators. Then they are uh, uh, having antimicrobial, antiviral, even anti-HIV properties. And people, they have studied the uh, anti-corona properties of flavonoids also. So they are very strong antioxidants, antimicrobial, anti-carcinogenic, 
anti-viral cardioprotective and anti-inflammatory properties. So the source of these flavonoids, they are uh, green tea or black tea, wine and beer and uh, also vegetables. So uh, avoid looking at the center picture and uh, concentrate on the picture on the edge. Like try to drink more tea or coffee and eat green and uh, vegetables and fruits instead of drinking beer and wine. Okay, so these uh, flavonoids, they contribute uh, to major fear in the market, like you have uh, many advertisements, slim tea, salana tea, dhunka tea, they all contain only high amount of flavonoids. If you drink green tea and uh, black tea, uh, you will get antioxidants and you will be slimmer. And uh, not only they... Uh, only tea, uh, tea drinking will make you slim, but you have to control your diet also. Okay, so don't fall prey into these false uh, advertisements. Now, alkaloids are the third category of compounds. They are low molecular weight nitrogenous compounds, and 20% uh, of the plant species they have found to contain them. But they are very attractive to human beings, especially uh, we are facing a lot of problems in Punjab due to these. For example, nicotine is there, cocaine is also a form of alkaloids and caffeine. These are uh, derived from plants, but they are converted into cocaine and heroin by using a chemical method. Then uh, alkaloids, they have been found in uh, like animals also, for example, in frogs, ants, butterfly, bacteria, sponges, fungi, spiders, beetles, and mammals. Uh, like uh, you might have seen reports that uh, uh, people who are drug addicts, they eat uh, frogs because some of the frogs, they contain alkaloids and they are psychoactive in nature. Okay. So, poppy is there, you all know about that. And uh, poppy, morphine is named after the god Morpheus, that is god of dreams. So, Greek god, they have this poppy capsule in their crown. So, this was the like uh, importance of poppy in the world culture. Then uh, you uh, might have heard that they are uh, Egypt ki the mummy, the mummy return movie. And they have uh, derived many uh, drugs from plants as well as from other organisms. Like therac is a mixture of opium, dried snake meat, and wine that were used to treat the bites of spider, scorpion, and snake. Then conine from conium is extremely toxic and uh, it was given to Socrates, Socrates to kill him. Then uh, Queen, Queen Cleopatra uses the extract of handband thiocymus to expand her pupil and to appear more attractive to her male political competitors. If you study please, the history of Queen Cleopatra, you will know uh, how important she was in the world history. Then in modern day, these alkaloids, they are used for the treatment of uh, uh, many uh, disorders. Like mostly they are used as painkillers. Uh, for example, atropine is anti door to nerve gas poisoning. Codeine and morphine, they are analgesic. Caffeine, they stimulate central nervous system. Quinine is anti barrier. All these drugs, codeine, morphine, atropine, they are regulated and they are available only inside the hospitals in the operation theaters, not in the general market. So we do work on the medicinal plants and uh, we have in India four different kind of hydroclimatic zones and uh, our work is mainly focused on uh, upper Himalayan region and up somewhere up to uh, Rajasthan. Like so India has 15 agroclimatic zones and over 17 to 18,000 species. And uh, out of these, 6 to 7,000, they have maternal uses and uh, they have been documented in Ayurveda, Siddha, Jirani, and Homeopathy. And uh, India is the largest exporter of herbs also. And uh, keeping this in mind, uh, uh, the Modi government, they have uh, established separate ministry of Ayush. Uh, that has very high potential as industry and uh, uh, we are expecting to double that 
a trade of so these are for up to 120 million dollars by 2050 so our set focus is uh, on uh, identification of uh, structural genes of secondary metabolic pathways such as flavonoids sulfonoids and terpenoids by high throughput transcriptome sequencing gene sequencing of small rnas and uh, using this we study the small rna mediated regulation of secondary metabolism gene expression and else in different developmental stages and under environmental conditions and we work on plants like chlorophytum borivillianum phyllanthus and lita was uh, studied by dr ramesh and uh, sasoria lapa so currently in our lab we are working on chlorophytum and sasoria lapa so chlorophytum is uh, commonly known as uh, Safed mostly, it is ranked the sixth among 28 priority medicinal plants selected by the Medicinal Plant Board of India to be promoted and protected. The demand of this plant is very high, but supply is very low, so that led to over exploitation and it's very costly. Like you, you can get it from uh, from sari shop by paying two thousand rupees per kg, and it is used in phytopharmaceutical and nutraceutical products. So it has high reference in uh, Ayurveda classic like Charak Samhita roots. They are mainly used. It has aphrodisiac agents and uh, aphrodisiac properties and vitalizer, and it is often referred to as herbal Viagra. It is used for the treatment of erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, low sperm count, and impotency. And if we combine it with the leaves of herbs such as Vidhania, Somni, Tera. Amblica of an officinelli, uh, then uh, it makes body resistant against attack of uh, sex-related diseases and delay menopause. So it is normally uh, uh, immunity booster and it cure physical weakness, illness, natal and postnatal problems, and it is also used in the treatment of diabetes and arthritis. So many products already they are available in the market. So it has a high amount of saponins. You can see here, uh, saponin percentage is very high, 10 to 20 percent. And uh, these saponins they are considered to be responsible for making properties of the plant. So among the, all the species of chlorophytum, chlorophytum borivillianum has the highest saponin content, and the best we use for study. So uh, our students. Uh, uh, Sita, Kalva, and uh, Sunil, they worked on this pathway as the production of saponins, and they identified all the genes of this pathway starting from methylcholine A to uh, all the steps which are there: choline synthase, epoxidase, cyclooctanase, cytochrome C450, and glycoside transferase by using uh, transcriptome sequencing. So. Our objective was there to identify the genes involved in saponin biosynthesis by a transcriptome sequencing and trace PCR, and also to identify the microRNA liberating saponin biosynthesis by deep sequencing of smaller RNAs and degradome sequencing, then gene expression analysis, and then functional characterization of pathway genes uh, uh, for enhancement of saponin content by heavy root induction and gene over expression. So. And like this is Sikha and Sunil, who worked on identification of genes of the pathway. So we did transcriptome sequencing and produced uh, 22 million single end reads and they produce up to 4 GB of data. At that time, it was very low. Right now, we can produce 50 to 60 GB of data because we have more advanced sequencer nowadays. So these reads they were filtered and uh, assembled. And uh, these are various software like Soap, Denovo, TGIFL. They are used for assembly and quality assessment of the transcriptome data. And uh, finally, we produce uh, over one lakh uh, contents out of this transcriptome sequencing. And then uh, we assign various uh, terms, both gene ontology classifications, to these. Uh, uh, Transcripts and uh, find out whether they were involved in biological processes, molecular functions, and cellular components. 
So in the end, uh, we were able to find out all the genes of the pathway, like uh, the number written here in the brackets, 5, 15, 13, it uh, describes the number of transcripts we find for each of the genes. So we have been having uh, like 15 genes for HMG coenzyme uh, synthase, HMG reductase, so, and up to end of the pathway. We, and then uh, we uh, identify the transcripts of all MBA and MEV pathway gene and saponin biosynthesis pathway. And we published the paper in loss one and functional and uh, integrative genome. In addition to these uh, saponin transcripts, we also find the transcripts involved in uh, flavonoid and alkaloid biosynthesis. So these are the transcripts we found for flavonoid and alkaloid biosynthesis. So, so flavonoid biosynthesis starts from phenylalanine and go up to uh, anthocyanins and catechins. Similarly, alkaloids is very diverse. They follow different pathway, but we found some transcripts for the pathway also. Then uh, by doing race PCR, we cloned uh, the full line genes of formulae synthase, squalene synthase, squalene epoxidase, cycloalkanine synthase, beta amine synthase, cytochrome P450 and UDP glycoside transcript. So this is the ORF length of all these genes from this pathway. Then we did, uh, because at that time we were not having any real-time PCR, so we did the semi quantity gene expression and we found that uh, the expression of CBS and CBSC, they were 1.8 to 1.2 times higher in the loop as compared to the Uh, sir, you are not audible. Am I audible to you, sir? Uh, participants, we will join within two minutes. Uh, have patience.
Yeah. Um, I am audible now, sir. Yes, sir. Your slides are also visible, and you are audible. Sorry, actually, my I am uh, I have been connecting my iPhone to my laptop, and my iPhone ज़्यादा गर्म हो गया and it. It's okay, sir. And uh, my wife. मी Otherwise, it will again be heated and sent in the again. We will call you offline, sir, later on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we will start again. Like I was telling that uh, saponins, they were uh, produced in the leaves and then stored in the roots. That was our uh, inference. Then on uh, after this, we identified the microRNAs. Regulating the saponin biosynthesis by using the sequencing of small RNAs, and we identified 251 conserved microRNAs belonging to 38 different uh, families. And uh, along with that, we identified uh, 300 novel microRNAs from this plant, and we found that uh, the target of genes they were involved in saponin biosynthesis. So, so we uh, published this report in. BMC biology and non-coding RNA research. So, for identification of microRNAs, we again performed transcriptome sequencing. Then, uh, after removing the adapters and quality checking, we used different uh, tools to identify the novel microRNAs and the known microRNAs using the MIRBASE database as a reference. So, this is the list of microRNAs. that are known identified uh, in our plant and these are the abundance of this microRNA so we get some microRNAs that were over 1 lakh reads and some they were even having one or two reads only so some were expressing very high and some were expressing very low so these are uh, the stats of uh, some novel microRNAs we identify that when you find out the Full microRNA. It should make a loop. It should be in the bulb, and it should have a microRNA and microRNA fast tag. So there are various parameters of characterizing the novel microRNAs, and after doing that, uh, we identified 300 different microRNAs, and these microRNAs, one to five, they were involved in saponin biosynthesis regulation. And uh, after identification with uh, by software, so we further clone these novel microRNAs. Uh, By PCR, and uh, after prediction of target, you can see uh, these are the list of microRNAs, and these are the genes of the pathway uh, that we are targeting saponins. And uh, many of these microRNAs, they were regulating many genes of the pathway. So this is overall diagram. So we identified the genes that are shown here in color. and also we identified the microRNAs that were regulating these genes so now we had a complete picture of genes available in the plants and the microRNA regulating it and then we studied the uh, cross path of the genes and microRNAs so, so you can be, see here where there is high gene expression the, the corresponding gene expression get lower down this is negative Gene expression. This is positive gene expression. Because microRNA, they are negative regulators of gene expression. So, if microRNA express होते हैं, तो gene का expression कम होता है. So, if you want to increase the expression of gene, you have to silence the microRNA. So, after getting this data, our aim was to produce, uh, uh, overproduce the saponins in the plant uh, in chlorophyta. as well as in equation at back because in chlorophytum uh, uh, protocol was not available so uh, we uh, generated the regeneration protocol 
for this plant and constructed the vectors uh, for SQS and SEG and uh, we started uh, using uh, agrobacterium ribogen strain for induction of heavy root and also we made the second cutter. So this is the plant chlorophytum and uh, these are seeds of this and we uh, produce the plants from this, multiply this plant from this seed. And then we uh, transform the assay genes into uh, PCAMBIA and PRI vector for our experiment, which you can see here. Uh, the induction of hairy roots in the sample, so high amount of hairy roots. Originally, the plant roots, they are like this, but in case of the transformation, you can see high number of roots, they were regenerated. Then, uh, because uh, uh, Pleurophyton was a monocot, it was not very easy to transform it, so we performed final plant. And uh, Nishant was working on this, and uh, two days back he has given us his PhD diaper. And uh, you can see from here we transformed the tobacco plant, and these are the white eye plants. White eye plants they are much larger as compared to the transgenic plants. Transgenic plants, which is internode length has that is reduced significantly, the plants they become shorter in size. Also, the leaf size is larger in this case. Okay. And uh, the leaf the, uh, architecture uh, it is also distorted in the plant. This is transgenic tobacco and this is normal tobacco. Okay, so you can see the architecture is distorted and also we have high floral uh, flowers. The number of the flowers, they were high in the transgenic plant as compared to the normal plant. So this is a normal tobacco plant. You can see only three or four flowers here. And this is a transgenic tobacco plant having very high number of floral buds. So this is a normal tobacco plant, and this is transgenic with very high amount of uh, what you call a hairy root. So again, this is a normal tobacco, and this is transgenic tobacco with very high number of roots. So we observed not only biochemical changes, but the morphological changes, distinct morphological changes, they were observed in this uh, tobacco plants by over expressing the SE gene we cloned from the chlorophyton polyvigil. So we have also done GCMS analysis. I have not shown this uh, because we are uh, still uh, uh, sending this paper for publication. So we are compiling the data and we'll send this paper for publication. Then we have another plant, the uh, Sasoria lapa. Uh, that is again a very high uh, important uh, medicinal plant grown at very high altitude. Like we collect this plant either from Kulu or from uh, Ceylon or from uh, Sangla Valley of Kinor. Okay. So my student uh, Shika, uh, sorry, Savita and Rasundra, they were working on that. And also we have a DST woman scientist who is working on this uh, plant. So this plant uh, is uh, very rigid, upright, and grew up to height of one to two meter. So this uh, plant grows at extreme low temperature because it grows uh, above 400 meters uh, altitude. So we collect this almost from the, like the picture you see here is, it is the border of India and China. And the uh, border of China was almost to four to five kilometers on this region where we collected this plant. So it is mainly grown in JNK, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand and uh, dried roots they are used. So these roots they were dried and then used for uh, more traditional and modern medicines. So uh, like saponins were important in uh, Savedmukli, uh, lactones, escutacin, lactones, they are important principle of this plant and uh, among all these lactones, cosinolide is one of the important biologically active compounds available from this plant. So this plant also, we have very high number of products already available in the market. We have food or coastal soil available in the market, used in uh, a combination with honey and other herbals. So it relieves pain, improves digestion, treats chest pain, vomiting, diarrhea, densile, densile stem dysplasia, regulate immune system and CNS. So it is very important uh, 
immunomodulators and uh, helps in uh, blood circulation anti inflammatory anti ulcer anti microbial treats cardiovascular disease so if someone has heart heart problems gastrointestinal problems they can use it and it's very useful and it's also having the petroprotective and anti cancer activity so if your blood system is very good you have already good hepato protection and anti cancer so in this plant we take four objectives identification of genes involved in cosinoid biosynthesis identification of transcription factors regulating cosinoid biosynthesis promoter cloning and uh, study of interaction of the promoters with transcription factors and identification of uh, microRNA regulating cosinoid biosynthesis i just see you in 15 minutes and uh, i will try to wind up in 15 minutes so this is the the general uh, flow chart like we uh, collected the plants from chitkul village uh, of kinor district in himachal pradesh and then isolated the rna for hisec sequencing and also for a small rna and dgdom sequencing then uh, did the de novo transcriptome assembly identification of genes and transcription factors involved in uh, cosinoid biosynthesis then we did uh, genome working for promoter cloning for dpd and cos genes and uh, construction of co expression networks then identification of sorry this is important then we characterized the promoters and the transcription factor and interaction by yeast one hybrid assay and uh, then studied the expression by dq artificial so this is collection of samples uh, from tetkul uh, village nursery and the maintenance of these plants in the uh, punjab university chandigarh without these plants they require extreme low temperature so we have to give ice to it instead of normal water so it is ice dal dete the but they survive not for very long time because they have the extreme cold condition so after doing this uh, transcriptome sequencing by lumina we got this much number of trees because we send the three three samples leaves and roots so approximately we generated 60 gb of data out of oh sorry 96.54 sorry 60 gb with the every length of 96.54 this day then uh, there are several uh, mechanism of characterization of uh, the transcripts like we got uh, over 1 lakh transcripts and out of these 73000 they were annotated using uniprot mcj and f database and remaining they were remain uh, novel to this plant so we did e value distribution last sex analysis uh, annotation of differentially expressed genes and uh, species distribution in this plants so these are standard procedure of transcriptome analysis we did that then uh, because we were involved in uh, studying the cosinoid biosynthesis so we uh, did the pathway enrichment analysis and we found that there were many transcripts that were involved in different uh, pathway you can see here tried the kinod backbone and other pathway then after doing this uh, pathway enrichment analysis we find out again all the genes that are involved in Uh, Cosinoid biosynthesis in this plant, starting from HMG conjugate to the cosinoid synthase and end product. So we identified again all the these genes of the pathway and uh, published the paper in Genome Journal. Then uh, we identified the transcription factors. So using this pathway. we search against the plants transcription factor database and then i did the co expression studies and uh, first we find that we have almost 58 families of transcription factors in present in this plant and then annotated them by go and the keg pathway mapping and then uh, by using differential expression analysis and the uh, uh, co expression method analysis we find out the transcription factors like uh, here in the one table they were regulating these these steps in the pathway that's in that the weaker l is for leaf and r is for 
So our interest was on costing line, biosynthesis and germaprene synthesis. So we found uh, the transcription factors that were regulating germaprene and costing line biosynthesis. Also. So then we prepared a co-expression network analysis to study the interaction of transcription factors with the gene of our interest. And this is a heat map of co-expression network using the R script or any other scripts that are used for this purpose. And uh, this is the network we prepared. But we have uh, these are the genes of the pathways, germaprene oxidase, costing life synthase, germaprene synthase, and the uh, DGD. And these are the transcription factors. So using this diagram, we can, it looks like a web, but uh, uh, we understand that we have the genes that are interacting with the various transcription factors. So in the end, we find out that we have uh, the cos and DPD genes that were interacting with the transcription factors. But they were giving very high significance. And this study, again, we published in international journal. Then uh, we started with cloning because to confirm the interaction of the transcription factor with the gene, we have to study whether the promoter of the gene was interacting with the transcription factor. So we cloned the promoter by genome working. So this is a flow diagram of so we have DNA segment, uh, DNA segmented by digestion, then adapter ligation, and then you have gene specific primer and adapter primer, and you can amplify the upstream region of your gene to clone the promoter. And after analyzing the promoter, we found that uh, there are many regulatory elements. They were present inside the promoter by using plant care and place for the and using these, uh, we can see here that we have a site for W box, MYC, MYB. Uh, these are all our transcription factors. So after this, we found that our promoter, they have binding sites for DHLS, DOP, and HP transcription factors, DPD genes. So we analyzed the 77, 777 base pair promoter of DPD gene that has 38 distinct six regulatory elements. And we find that we have DHLS, DOF, and VQ transcription factor family that were uh, regulating this gene. And uh, similarly, we did studies on costing line synthesis gene, and we found that we have transcription factor binding sites for MYG genes on the promoter. So we found uh, three MYB candidates that were uh, interacting with the cotton life synthesis. So to confirm these interactions, we perform yeast one hybrid assay. So what to do in this case, you have the uh, promoter cloned in the vector, then you have the transcription factor cloned in the vector. So if there is interaction between the transcription factor and the promoter, then you will see the interaction uh, a complementation in the yeast. If the gene and transcription factor will not uh, interact, the yeast will not be able to grow. If, if they will complement each other, the yeast will be able to grow. So this is uh, the base uh, promoter, sorry, base uh, uh, vector. In this, we have cloned the cos gene. And this is uh, the prey vector. So we have two kinds of vectors in this, base and prey. So in one, you clone your gene promoter, like cost promoter. And in the other, we have cloned our uh, transcription factor. So we use seven different transcription factors uh, in seven different clay plasmids and studied interaction of all these transcription factors with the work costing life synthesis promoter. So uh, this is a diagram. You have the promoter and you have the transcription factor. 
so if they will not interact together there will be no colonies like they have they have been seen here so but we find certain positive colonies for dog dhl and dp means in the dcd submitting so they were interacting and we see the growth of them organism so similarly uh, this study we have published in may in national journal of biological ethnology so in the end we have identified and characterized transcription factors uh, from cotton by of cotton by synthesis for elata and identified the uh, transcription factors that were regulating the cotton by synthesis their differential expression pattern was studied so this so it the first study means in uh, in the majority of the plants like in the chlorophytum also in the spasoria lapa also uh, our lab is the one who started this work so there is no competitor to us so this was the first study that we have done and uh, microbiology digital lab and also this is in progress so uh, we have completed that because that we have uh, uh, short of i uh, don't short of time so i will not uh, show you the results of that Maybe some other time I will show you that. Otherwise, you will get mixed up and go. Okay. So, fortunately, I have funding from many funding agencies. Uh, right now, I have five projects running in my lab. So, I got projects from SERB, DSP, DBC, and CSIR. Uh, ICMR also, the busy ones to talk to. And uh, land wise, again, I should thank you, everyone. For patiently listening to my talk, and that I really feel sorry for the interruption due to network problem from my side. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you, sir. Uh, if uh, any participant uh, would like to ask question, uh, he or she can unmute himself, herself. okay thank you very much sir for sparing your precious time and interacting with our student on the topic uh, really the there is the need of the uh, medicinal plants to combat the uh, various diseases as most of the people they are now awareing uh, they are getting aware about the uh, side effects of the allopathic medicine and they are uh, shifting toward the uh, this herbal ayurvedic mode of uh, treatment and you have uh, meticulously explained the uh, importance of the secondary metabolites uh, for the uh, plants themselves as well as for the uh, humans because these metabolites they are uh, very uh, useful uh, for uh, the drug preparation but uh, there is problem that these secondary metabolites production is very low in the plants uh, and there is really a dire need of uh, increasing their amount uh, by over expressing or co expressing of the uh, genes in the plant and there is one example that if we would like to uh, extract the anti cancer compound from a plant u from there is a plant u uh, from which we can get the taxol uh, as the anti cancer compound uh, if we would like to get 1 kg of that compound we need 10000 kg of the bark so really if we would like to get this kind of metabolites we have to exploit more and more plants and really it will disturb our ecosystem and uh, if we can engineer uh, such kind of uh, metabolic pathway by uh, identifying the new genes and then cloning the genes and then co-expressing with the uh, other genes in the plant we can increase their content uh, for the use of the human and uh, we are again very thankful sir and uh, next time we would like to see here in our university and soon so thank you very much sir for your uh, very nice and fruitful lecture thank you very much sir thank you everyone see you on another time thank you okay thank you sir
okay all the participants now uh, we are having the another session of oral and poster presentations and uh, the 